Yeah. Now, just to go back in history a little bit, I understand that U.S. Foods has been a Snowflake customer for three or four years, several years. How are you using the Snowflake technology and how has that evolved over time? You know what? I have to say, it's, it's, you're right. I mean, it's been, it's, I can't believe it's, all, it's been four years already. But I have to say, it's, it's, it's been a great journey. And, uh, and I think that uh, Snowflake and U.S. Foods had uh, a great partnership throughout the years. You know, you know, I have to say, you know, interestingly enough, I mean, we started with Snowflake uh, very small, right? I mean, we actually brought the technology as a mean to really address a, a specific technical problem. And, and as, uh, as we, we started using uh, the technology, you know, we came to quickly realize that, you know, Snowflake was uh, bringing a number of, of capabilities that were definitely, you know, kind of helping accelerate some of the, the initial strategy we had in mind when we, we started to, to journey around analytics and big data. And so I think that, you know, as, as we got to, new, to, to know and use the technology, we have, you know, increasingly relied on, on some of those core capabilities to, to support our needs. I would say that today, you know, Snowflake is, is definitely integra- an, integ- an integral part of our technology ecosystem. And we're using it to, uh, frankly, support a very wide vari- variety of, of activities, you know, can, you know that's, which are ranging from reporting advanced analytics. And, you know, we're even using it in, in some applications. So overall, I think that uh, yeah, Snowflake has, has grown quite a bit uh, in, a, in a portfolio because of the value it has provided to us. Yeah, yeah. Hey, go back to the beginning though for a second here. Could you describe what that first use case was? When we started the journey four years ago, we were, you know, we had a, a very traditional, you know, technology stack when we when we think about reporting, right? And so we were running into an, situations where we would try to do to do a report, but the report. Um, the user experience was not that great because, uh, the, you know, we, we struggled a little bit to kind of gather or gather the data in a timely fashion. And so that's what led us to really take a look at Snowflake. Uh, you know, when Snowflake came to us and, and kind of advertised their performance, we were, we were you know, puzzled but, but intrigued. And, and that's what uh, led to, to begin the, to start the relationship. So initially it was really a data integration issue. It was actually, uh, yeah, it was a, I would say, a reporting issue. Mm. It was, it was mostly, you know, kind of finding a way to to better serve our customers or end users in that case, to provide them with a, the best reporting experience. Indeed. Could you describe it a little bit more? I mean, I think, in generalities, I'm getting the idea, but I, I sometimes we we really want to get down to the the details of something to say, well, what was the problem, and how did this solve it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in that specific case, I mean, the problem was that we weren't able to um, deliver a report in a timely fashion because the quantity of data was so difficult to manage using the what I would call the traditional platform. And we brought in Snowflake to to address that issue. Yeah. Now you said you since then you've it's expanded, you know, all sorts of places within the company and the uh, different applications you have. Could you perhaps describe one of the more up-to-date, one of the one of your latest innovations using Snowflake, in terms of the way Snowflake is being used within the company as it goes along? That's not proprietary. That's not uh, sensitive in that way. You know, there's a technology aspect, but there's also I think a process aspect, and I think that uh, the reason why you know Snowflake is working well for us is that it's uh, it fits uh, very well into into the process we have established um, to to accelerate our ability to deliver, and so by you know, and as a, the, the the change in process is enabling a number of users to to use the technology in different fashions, right? I mean, that can range from direct access to the data down to the ability to report, or even the ability to pull the data in a in a timely fashion, you know, usually large quantity of data in timely fashion, in timely fashion to to run some analysis, right? So it's definitely what uh, Snowflake uh, does for us. So, what new capabilities does Snowflake cloud data platform provide for U.S. foods? The kind of capabilities it didn't have before, or it couldn't do as well before. I think you know, there's actually a number of them that comes to mind. You know, and and some of them are, are not you per se, but I, I think that to your point. Uh, 
what Snowflake has done for us is that it has made it has made it easier for us to to perform some of those uh, critical you know functions I would say. So for example, right, it's it's not too new, but I mean one of the you know, features that we're using that we like a lot is is the notion of, of time travel, mm. right, uh, which is basically the ability to go back in time to recover data and and tables, and that has been very handy because you know as we you know kind of provide a way for our users to get closer to the data well things happen right and so being able to recover uh, that infrastructure very quickly is, is absolutely very key and and that's absolutely been a, a time saver for for us but other you know things that we really like in some of those of those uh, of the new features are are things like the multi cluster warehouse right and uh, the fact that they are providing materialized views those are actually features that actually make help our customers you know being pr- more productive right and and kind of access the data in a in a faster fashion and, and we love the flexibility and the scalability offered by you know things like the multi cluster so really being able to have that flexibility i think is is really what uh, what snowflake uh, does the best for us yeah now, when you're talking about customers here, you're talking in this case about your internal customers, about about the data analysts and and database administrators and people like that. Correct? That, that is correct. Yes, that would be our end users. Probably a better term than customers for sure. Before this conversation started, when you think on uh, when you think back on what were the big issues in your professional life over the last you know couple of weeks, is there something that really is of great concern and interest to you that the data and data analytics can address or help solve? I think that, you know, with, with these situations, there's a lot of unknown, right? You know, whether, you know, we understand, uh, you know, what COVID-19 is all about and, you know, as we're trying to validate whether or not some of the things we're doing are, uh, you know, are effective to, to help either people being more healthy or, you know, in our case, our customers and, and employees to be, Safer and more successful. I think I think data is is absolutely going to play a, a very critical role in making sure that we 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 take a, a you know a more pragmatic approach, understanding the facts to take the right you know decisions to make the right decision in the future, right? And I, I think that uh, U.S. food uh, is is no different from what we're you know looking you know, what we're experiencing, what all the companies are experiencing, in the sense that you know definitely looking at uh, maybe we're definitely looking at the data. Sometimes in the same way, but you know, more more importantly, we are also looking at ways, maybe at, at data under a different angle to really understand how we can do a better job. So, so that's that's what data is going to do for us. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the fact that so much is unknown these days, and you know, a lot of data analytics that has to do with, with machine learning and modeling is based on a lot of learning of, of what happened in the past. And suddenly you have a break like this and the world has changed. And a lot of those old models really don't work anymore. So do you have to kind of crank up new machine learning and stuff like that really quickly to, to, to make sense of the world and to know how to respond to it? Is, is it kind of in some ways even more critical than before? Oh, no, absolutely. I think that, as you stated very rightly so, I think that many of the models that everybody uh, has been using in the past are, you know, are definitely broken, right? And so, you know, definitely trying to understand, you know, how to, what criteria are now getting and influencing the various model you're using is, is definitely one of the key challenges we have, you know, moving forward. Is there anything, DA, that you've thought of that you'd like to, you know, any new area like you'd like to kind of explore or, or is there anything that is important to you that we didn't discuss that might be worth discussing? No, I have to say, you know, I, I'll tell you this. I mean, there's a, when it comes to data, there's a lot we can do. And and so, you know, you know how that goes, right? Uh, data is, is almost like uh, the new strategic weapon for many of the organizations. So I, I have to say, you know, many exciting things are happening uh, you know, when you look into news, but it, it's true that it's very hard to talk at the, to discuss at the in, you know at the company level until those uh, some of those uh, findings are becoming uh, mainstream, if I may say. You know, interestingly enough, I mean, with data, you, you tend to know you know once things. Uh, it takes some time for it takes some time for for people to realize what has been done until you see the outcome. But uh, by that time, it's you know by that time those findings are being are made public. Unfortunately, the the concepts are are no longer new. 
<laughs> so no. well, that's a little bit of the irony of data. So if I understand you correctly, you're talking about the fact that a person like you, who's down in the in the weeds of data every day and, and trying out the latest technologies, you're seeing the role that it plays in making businesses respond better or perform better. But it's really hard. There's, there's a disconnect between what you see and what you do and you know, maybe your customers or maybe people in general understand about how, in, how important data is for you know, society and business and the economy. I would rather say that definitely a lot of things are happening in many companies, but often uh, what has been done is is visible, you know, long after the facts mm. because of the fact that you know novel novel concepts and principles are being implemented, uh, you know, uh, and tested, and you know they appear once, you know, if they are successful and. And that's that's really what is happening today in, in many organizations. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. You know, a few years ago, I used to I worked for IBM for a few years, and there were a few projects where I interviewed a lot of CIOs about what was going on. And the focus at IBM was very much on data analytics and on cognitive computing and on AI. And uh, I would talk to these CIOs, and they were saying, you know, we have a little bit, we you know, our, we have our finger in that, but mainly we're just trying to make our SAP work and things like that. But I have a sense that today things have really flipped, that a lot of companies that maybe were conservative in the past really are doing a lot more adventurous things with data analytics and, you know, even with machine learning and AI and stuff like that. What, what's your sense of that? Are, are a lot of companies really getting into this deeply? You know, uh, this is a sense, absolutely. And I, and I think that, you yeah. know, I think the appetite for companies to be more iterative and agile, right, uh, is not new. But I think what has changed is is really the technology landscape, right? The adoptions of, you know, cloud and the, you know, emergence of technologies as Snowflake have made it much easier for anyone to go and and test and fail fast, right? And I think that's that's has been a, a key game changer for us, right? The ability to really kind of try, you know, with minimal investment, you know, just to us, you know, to, to and, and and validate hypotheses uh, very quickly has been a game changer. Right? What used to take uh, months sometimes, right, is is now available to many through cloud capabilities, right? And and so I think that's what has changed since uh, since the emergence of cloud. Yeah. So companies can, they can experiment more. I mean, in the past, they they had they spent months building a, a system and, and doing all that investment. They wouldn't even know if it was going to work properly until maybe a year later. But now you can just try something out in in a few minutes and see if it works, right? Uh, absolutely. And, and not only you can do that, but you can absolutely also try various technologies, right? I mean, one of the things that is, fascinating in the data landscape is the you know is the fact that you have an emergence of new concept uh, on a regular basis right and the ability we have to really try apply them and you know when needed you know pivot to other concepts you know because of cloud thanks to cloud is, is what has been you know it has been the game changer for for many companies including ours yeah. yeah well didier i want to thank you so much for your time today your stories and your insights about what you do with data and how you do it really has been fascinating. So thanks again for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. That does it for this episode of Rise of the Data Cloud. Thank you for listening. This episode is brought to you by Snowflake. To see how you can get secure and easy access to any data with near infinite scalability, visit snowflake.com.